Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And uh, check this out, look, we've got light and uh, you guys can finally see me now. So being that we've been going out super late at, uh, or super early in the morning, and I really do want to start fishing like late at night and doing some nighttime fishing, just cause it's so dang hot and that Texas heat and the sun, um, it can just be tough to really make your morning like super productive. So fishing through the night, I've noticed like fishing these lights and stuff is uh, super, super productive. And once we get into these houses, I'm gonna try and be quiet. I'll be like whispering to the camera so we don't wake anybody up. But yeah, let's get into it and let's get some fish in the boat. Nice speckled trout right here, y'all. Alrighty, boys. Got our wire nice and in there. Just make sure you're completely severing that guy's spinal cord and boom. All right, fellas, so what we just did to this speckled trout is a Japanese method of killing your fish called Ikejime. And so basically all you're doing is um, kind of preserving your catch in a way that he's gonna stay fresh longer. Now, in my opinion, if you leave and you go cook this right away, right when you get home, um, it's gonna be fresh no matter what. You're not gonna have that nasty taste. But if you wait a couple days, is when you're really gonna notice that Ikejime method, uh, which is pretty cool in my opinion. I've always liked the way Japanese and their culture, they can take simply mundane tasks and do them with like extreme precision and care. Just very meticulous about things and you end up with like Kobe beef, you know, some of the best sushi in the world and just really cool stuff. So this is one of those things where they take fishing and they, you know, take a little bit of extra care with it. And uh, the, you know, the science behind Ikejime is pretty much you're just cutting off his a brain's ability to release his stress hormone cortisol which makes the meat taste kind of nasty and then by severing his spinal cord with a little wire you're cutting off his ability to um, randomly twitch because even once they're brain dead their nervous system will still kind of randomly twitch and that will release uh what is it lactic acid in his meat which is also a no-no so by severing the brain and then also severing the spinal cord, you don't worry about any of that. back out here another new morning we got a little bit of time before the sun comes up so we're gonna work these lights real quick and then uh, maybe we'll skirt out to a marsh but I'm gonna go ahead and shut up and get to fishing freaking sun is starting to come up dude ah. and really the only thing biting right now is mosquitoes for me I'm getting freaking destroyed by these guys and not to say that this isn't working out we've already got like three keepers my pops has got got all of them uh, I guess I've just been picking the, the bad lights I went and fished like five different lights with no keepers in them besides that one little dink my pops picked like two money ones over at the first bunch and then these guys right here have been kind of dead so there we go y'all nice trout probably and these guys are all cookie cutter uh, come here buddy come on don't need you splashing the camera Oh shoot, I don't think that guy was in a keep either way, but still a nice little, nice little tight line for us.
look at this little dink. Jeez Louise, man. So, been working this light. And man, oh man, look at this. So the way I look at it is like these little lights, man, to me, they're kind of like, it's like middle school, right? And there's every once in a while you'll catch the eighth grader that's just getting ready to graduate and go to high school. And that's like your big, uh, that's like your big old 15, 16 inch trouts, right? From these lights. And then if you're really lucky, like the day we had an off at, you'll catch like one of those eighth graders that failed a couple times and he's still hanging around with the youngins. It's like a nice 17, 18 inch trout. Well, fellas, the sun has completely come up on us. As you can see, it's peeking over the houses there. And we're fishing a spot now that I have actually come out and fished in the past. Way back when we had the skiff, we came out here and uh, actually had some pretty good days. It wasn't like summertime when we were fishing. Um, I think the last time we were here is when we had the skiff and that was like fall, spring. It was like fall time and winter time fishing, I think, which is always kind of good, no matter where you go. I've got some blow ups though. Basically the issue with this, oh yeah, okay, come on. Come on, that's kind of, please. No, dude. I literally broke off setting the hook in that guy. Oh my gosh, y'all. Oh, when, when will it ever become, when will I ever learn? That my actions have consequences, dude. Oh man, that would have been really nice to get that fish, but yeah, uh, the area we're in pretty much like the issue why we don't come here often is the launch is super far away, like four miles away. And so, to get back here with a reasonable amount of time to fish in a kayak is kind of ridiculous. But uh, we're pretty lucky today that we got to use a private boat ramp so we got out here with time to spare let's go ahead and re-rig real quick y'all that was a hundred percent of red that we tagged into and just completely missed man i mean look at that re-rigged up here y'all and we're just throwing the same exact thing little old loop knot i think i messed it up because the tag end is like gonna snag stuff but oh well um still a nice good solid knot not gonna go nowhere and then we got the little eighth ounce jig head on a down south lure. It actually looks rigged a little bit awkwardly here. But yeah, man, my drag has been plaguing me these last couple trips. This past couple months, I've been in a constant like teeter-totter of, you know, I'll lose a fish because the drag is too tight and my line snaps and my stuff snaps. And then, um, you know, I'll go to the complete opposite end of it, that where I'm like, all right, let's loosen this drag completely. And then I'm missing them because I don't get enough backbone on that hook set. Now we're just going to work the grass line. Try and lightly put it out there. And lightly bring it back. I got a little something already. I think this is a flounder. Oh my gosh, look at this little potato skin. How am I moving this quick on a half speed setting? Let's get this guy off the hook. God, little bud came and annihilated it. Absolute savage right here. Give me my plastic. Little weirdo, man. Oh man, you guys, we've got a nice couple blow ups over here on the top of the water just at the corner of this dock. I thought I heard people moving around about on their um, on their little balcony. But that's actually a, a freaking trout going nuts. Let's go see if we can fool this guy on the top water really quick before we scoot into here and go into this marshy stuff. There's a deep pool right here as well where this channel kind of connects to that marsh stuff. Try and get like a good cast, a solid cast right here. Right there at that corner. Now we're gonna need a better, oh. I swear right when you stop working is when they wanna come and get it, dude. I was like trying to resituate for a better cast here. 
Oh, nice guy, nice guy. Definitely a keeper here. Come here, buddy. Yes, sir, that's a keeper trout. Let's go. Oh man, I wish I could tell my pops to come over here because these guys are aggressively feeding on the top water. Tons of fun when you get to see that. Then you just come rip them up with your top water. It's so fun. Let's go ahead and get this guy off and then get him on the stringer. It's 100% a keeper. No, that guy's gonna keep 100% keep. 15 and a half with a open mouth. Yeah. All right, buddy. You're going in the in the ice box. Nice. That's a big one. I've been messing around. My pop. My pops just caught the nice one that's been blowing up over there. Yeah. Could be a big old trout. All right, well, this guy's brain dead, though. Um, I was trying to get the wire through his spinal cord, and he took a dump all over me, and that was my final straw. Now I'm watching this guy catch the fish in front of me. Let's see. Is that a red or a trout? What if it's a topwater catfish? That's a red. Yeah, yeah. Nice red fish, man. We could have caught that and got our slam, boys. Oh, okay. Did you touch the leader? Uh, it don't matter. No. Well, to give you guys a quick update of what's going through my head, what's going on in the day right now on the trip, pretty much at this time, the sun's up and I'm already ready mentally to leave, but I mean, we've had such an awesome day today and I've got the little flounder, nice keeper trout, and the uh, only thing that's on my mind is that red that I lost earlier. Oh man, so I really am just honestly, kind of chilling now and hunting for a red that's why i'm going through all this grassy stuff is it a long shot at this point in the day i'm gonna say yeah i'm gonna say it's a long shot to catch a red after that sun's come up you can get lucky and you can make it happen what was that dude something that came and tagged my lure but uh, i'm just pretty much making hail mary casts until it's time to go probably could have stayed over there and kept catching trout but I mean, dude, we've already got our keeper. I got one yesterday. Can do a nice little cook. And, um, yeah, maybe get a Texas slam. So, made it to the promised lands. This is, uh, this area is reds galore. So, we're going to get on them. It's going to be around here. You just got to get lucky. There we go, y'all. No. No, man. Oh my God, boys. That was our red. I was just holding on for dear life. Oh my God, like, guys, I mean, the, the stuff that goes through my head right there, right there, I did not get to set the hook. That guy took it and started going. And it's like, if I stop to set the hook right there, I'm really so terrified that I'm gonna bust my knots. It's just because of how, like, bad not even bust my knots but snap my dang line so i didn't want to set the hook and then the guy's on a big old run i just must have barely had him hooked dude ah uh, guys the pain and suffering of just wanting to catch a red and having so many opportunities and just failing every single time oh uh, something always has to happen and i feel like a dang broken record coming up with excuse after excuse but like I mean, what do you do in that situation, you know? Given the circumstances, I've got fresh freaking just destroyed line in the back of my head. Here we go, y'all. A little something here. Let's see, is this a flounder or a red? This has got to be a flounder, huh? Oh, yeah, nice flounder. Let's go. Go ahead and get this guy in the boat here. Oh no, I think it's actually a stingray. No! Bro, this reminds me of fishing with Kevin, bro. God dang it, this is a nice big one too. Gotta get this guy off real quick. All right, bro, please don't sting me. Jesus, I wish I had longer pliers in times like this. Oh, he came and got me with the tail, bro. You can't be fainting those tail swipes, bro. 
holy what an action-packed moment man guys you don't know how bad I wish I could get those two bites back solid day to be honest I'm not gonna sit here and complain I mean keeper trout nice flounder tons of action topwater action I mean all around if I had to average out this day it's like an 80 an 85 out of 100 it was just a fun day good experience but oh it just sucks losing those fish not, not only does it suck you know it just take it on the chin lost your fish but it's also kind of embarrassing dude like I mean I guess I'm preaching to the choir no one's forcing me to upload these videos no one's forcing me to record the clips I could just never speak of those uh those moments again and edit it out but at the same time I've gotten comments in the past where you guys really or you've let me know that you appreciate uploading the good and the bad which don't worry I've got plenty of both but yeah I'll go ahead and throw those in there sucks to lose those fish man but we're learning dude eventually I'll get this drag right eventually my knots will be primo and uh, you guys will get to see it too so I hope you did enjoy the video overall though man uh, it was a fun day I had a lot of fun out here and I hope you guys had fun watching so if you did hit that like button I would really appreciate it hit the subscribe button for more content like this and I hope you guys have a great rest of day Peace.